Confession time. That's one of my favorite songs. I often have been known, let's put this back, why it's my favorite song. About eight, nine years ago, seven years ago, I lose track of time, I used to sit on the bridge in Napanee, over the center, or the center Street Bridge, over the Napanee River, and look up and down the river and to have that total sense of didn't know what was going on. My life was in turmoil, I was in topsy-turvy, I was totally lost. And I like that song because it talks about standing on the bridge and not knowing what direction life is going in. The person who wrote that song wrote that song standing on that bridge. That's my former neighbor and the kid that used to skateboard in my front yard in the steps of my church in Napanee, Avril Lavigne. And she wrote that song out of the confusion of her own life. And I found it interesting that here's this teenager who wrote this song expressing the confusion of her life and she was tapping into the confusion of my own life. And I realized that it had such a dynamic range across the, the age ranges of people. We all have that moment in time when we don't know where we are or who we connect to. Obviously, we're going to talk about loss today. Have you noticed that? It's a theme. So I've got a question for you. What's the difference between being lost and not being lost? Not knowing, what you're going. Pardon me? Not, knowing what you're not knowing what direction you're going in. Any other? Grounded. Pardon me? Grounded. Grounded. What's the difference between being lost in the woods and not being lost? Signposts. Signposts. Actually, which leads to a knowledge, right? The difference between being lost in the woods and not being lost is an awareness of where you are in the landscape. It's, a, it's an awareness of where you are. The difference, I can be out in the woods and disoriented and not have any sense of where I am. Or I can be on a boat on the ocean and not have any sense of where I am. And I'm lost. And I can be there in that exact same location at another time, but now be fully cognizant and aware. And there's things that cause that condition to happen in our life. For the years I was on the East Coast Ministry, traveling the Labrador in small boats, I know that a good fog bank could make me lost when a good, good sunny day, I could still have a sense of where I was. Years of camping and wilderness camping and canoeing in the, in the bush taught me that the difference of keeping a track of the signposts, of the, of the telltales, of, of the, the lay of the land, helped me understand where I was in the landscape and not be lost. What do you do when you do get lost? Does anybody know? Remember that new free expression I used the other day that you made you all laugh? Stays where you're to till it gets where you're at? Now you know why the Newfies use it. <laughs> they used to tell my dad all the time, you people are always lost. <laughs> what you can expect for being on a rock in the woods. Now all the Newfie background people here are going to get mad at, mad at my Nova Scotian comments about Newfoundlanders. But it's the truth to that. There's a truth to it. Because what happens when we're lost is we are disconnected. We're disconnected. We're disconnected from a knowledge and an awareness of our where we are, of ourself. As Phyllis says, we're not grounded. As Will says, we don't have a sense of our own direction. We're gone. So today in Scripture, you have references to the lost coin and the lost sheep. And there's a thing that happens in our social society and in our theological society, in our church world, that we tend to think of people as being lost. We think that's some kind of active thing, that they made a point of getting themselves lost and that they have to do something to get themselves found. And in actual fact, a coin never knows it's lost. It's a coin. It does not know it's lost. 
And sheep? Anybody here been a shepherd? Got friends who are shepherds? I, grew, I, I spent years in Cape Breton in ministry and I learned from the sheep farmers there, sheep are really, really, really stupid. <laughs> It's the only way you can put it, because that's the way it was described to me by the clerk of the session of the Gabarush United Church about his sheep. They are that stupid that they don't know anything other than that they got to flock together. And so they don't know when they're lost. They just wander off having a good day. So interestingly enough, there was no sense of distress on the part of the coin or the sheep. The distress was on the part of the person who lost them. And have you ever noticed that about people you think that person's a lost soul? Like, how can they live like that? How can they do that? How do they have that attitude towards life? They're just lost. They, they've lost it. They've completely lost it. They have no sense of reality. They have no sense of propriety. They have no sense of direction. They have no sense of purpose. They have no and we all make that judgment. Right? And what do we do with that? It's a trick question. It really is a trick question because I just gave you the answer. We judge them. We judge them. We judge them because they're not living the way we want. They're not living the way we think they should. There's something, condition, or quality of their life we don't like. We don't like the way they treat their neighbors. We don't like the way they treat their families. We don't like the way they, they abuse or abuse people in this world. We think of the ways that we can describe people as morally bankrupt or in the wrong direction or have lost their way or have given up on life. We can judge people who have gone through intense grief and can't seem to get over it. We judge people who have chronic illnesses and seem to whine about it. We have all of these judgments we put on people and we are patient and we are loving and we are Christian about it but we're still judging them. Question becomes who really is lost? And who has lost their direction? We are called to live in a faith that speaks of keeping our eye on God. Keeping our sense of our own purpose and our own direction. But more importantly, it comes back to my song. At some point in time, we're all on that bridge. We've all got confused about what's going on in life. We've all lost our sense of direction or purpose or things have just happened so fast or turned around so much in our life. And the reason I look at people and go, they're living a life that's just way out there, like I couldn't understand how they get that way. When I get to know them, I discover they're missing something. And it's the same thing that I end up missing when I am sitting in the woods with no sense of where I am or I'm on the boat with no sense of where I'm going or I'm sitting on a bridge feeling that my life has gotten all mixed up. And it's a sense of connection. Connection. When we speak of this congregation, we talk about it as a family of faith. A place where we connect with one another. And in that connection, we talk about the way in that connection the love of God comes through. Because we all seek to share the hope, the life, the love of God with one another. And in that connection, we find our way and find our direction. Keeping our eye on the sun, S-O-N, and knowing our sense of what my life is about. We know where we live in the social landscape of our living. Now I played that song at the start of the service, the Lindsay Sterling violin piece with the, we, uh, with the African mission for two reasons. One was to celebrate our mission work and the work that, that happens here and to show that that connect. But the other is to say, the words of the song say, we found love in a helpless place. And then it says, we found love 
in a hopeful place. And it shows people connecting. Connecting across the culture, across geography, across music, across all kinds of lines and barriers that normally would divide people, isolate them, have them sitting on the bridge by themselves. The scriptures today speak about the desolation that Jeremiah speaks about, that barren landscape that we can be doomed to live in. He's not talking about mountains and valleys physically being destroyed. He's talking about the mountains and valleys of our, of our society, of our being, of our, of, our, of our life. That we live in that desert wasteland when we lose that sight of God. And the passive lost individual, the coin, the sheep, they didn't know they were lost. They weren't making a judgment on their condition. They didn't know it. Sometimes we're lucky enough to know we are lost. Other times we don't. We don't. Until we find that place where we finally plug in and connect and go, Oh wow, I didn't know I was missing that. I didn't know. Our God really is never away from us. Never disconnected from us. But we are often disconnected from God. And sometimes you have to listen to the pithy little wisdom of stays where you're to till it gets where you're at. Because when you're lost, you stay in one place and God finds you. When you are lost, you stay in that place and you look around and you find what it is you can, you can connect with that gives you a sense of life and love again. I remember when I got off the bridge, talking with a guy who was a pretty brilliant actually, I've to come to discover. And I said, I feel like I'm living in a wasteland. I feel like I'm living in a wilderness. And he says, so what? It's okay. You're running around like a chicken with your head cut off trying to find a direction. Stay there and all of a sudden you'll notice that the fog clears. And you discover there's all kinds of people around you the same way. And you just reach out to one of them. Who'd figure I'd think you'd call that church? But it's the truth. Look around. Anybody here never had a sense of being lost? See, no one can put their hands up. But how many people here can say that in the course of their lifetime they've had a sense that they've connected with something or someone that's helped them understand that they are found? That's the power of finding life in a hopeless place and finding love in a hopeful place. Because they become the same place. The difference between love and lost is us, is our attitude to where we are. The word repent that they use in the, in the, in the, in the gospel today about repentance, turning around and finding your way through repentance. The word repentance is a lovely word that we things seem to think means prostrating yourself and going, oh, I'm sorry, I'm guilty, and all the rest of it. Sorry, but the Greek for the word repent simply means really two things, turn around or change. It's about turn around your attitude or change your attitude. Connect and change. And when you connect with God, we change. When we connect with the power of God's love through one another, we change. And for those that have had to spend their life connecting with me, they've given them lots of opportunity to change and to repent and to change their attitudes about me, for sure. And I will smile when I say that. So I want you to know, my message to you today is that you can stand on a bridge lost, 
you can stand in the, on the savannah of Africa and dance. It doesn't matter where you are. God's with you. And you always have the opportunity to change and to grow.